Best Soccer Show. Jason Davis here with you live. A special U.S. Men's National Team roster edition of the program. Holding it down by my lonesome. We have a 30-man roster for the U.S. Men's National Team. Players Jurgen Klinsmann is calling into camp as he prepares his squad for the World Cup in Brazil in less in, in about a month's time. Uh, this is the team. This is the 30-man roster that uh, Klinsmann is talking about creating competition within. Clearly, we know some of these guys are going. Others of these guys will be on the bubble. They'll be fighting for their place, apparently. We have uh, open phone lines right now, 201-430-2378. This is your show to get in your thoughts. Let's go over this roster in case either you haven't heard it or just because this is new to me. I just saw this myself as we came on the air. Brad Guzan, Tim Howard, Nick Romando, and goal, no surprises there. Demarcus Beasley, Matt Beasler, John Brooks, Jeff Cameron, Timmy Chandler, surprise return for Timmy Chandler, Brad Evans, Omar Gonzalez, Clarence Goodson, Fabian Johnson, Michael Parkhurst, and DeAndre Yedlin. So the kid gets a look as well. Midfielders, Kyle Beckerman, Alejandro Bedoya, Michael Bradley, Joe Corona. Brad Davis, good to see Joe Corona's name there. Brad Davis, Mix Discarude, Marisa Du, Julian Green, Jermaine Jones, and Graham Zussi. Julian Green in the 30-man roster. Lots to talk about whether he'll go to Brazil. Forwards, Josie Althador, Terrence Boyd, Clint Dempsey, Landon Donovan, Aaron Johansson, and Chris Wondolowski. That means... Number one, any rumor that said Landon Donovan wasn't on the list was clearly wrong. And number two, Eddie Johnson left out completely. A player who was crucial during World Cup qualifying is not on the 30-man roster. It looks like uh, Chris Wondolowski has gotten that nod instead. We'll take your calls. Any surprises for you guys left off that you would have liked to have seen in this team? Again, um, this is the team that, that Klinsman will run through its paces, attempt to pick out a couple of spots where players are competing for those last few roster spots. If we went through this, if we look at this team, we could probably pick out the guys that are completely secure in their places. And remember, uh, Omar Gonzalez carrying an injury right now won't be able to participate. What does that mean for the center back position? Are there a couple of guys who maybe can make a case? Y you know Clarence Goodson's going to the World Cup. Will he be a starter there? You know Jeff Cameron's going to the World Cup. Could he slide into central defense and be a starter there. You got Michael Parkhurst. He's versatile. He can play in the middle. He can play on the right-hand side. He can even play left back in a pinch if you need him to. Not that that's where you want him. But that's an interesting battle there at the back of the U.S. team. In the midfield, Kyle Beckerman, Bedoya, no surprises. Michael Bradley, no surprise. Joe Corona gets a chance to impress. He's one of those guys you would pick out as unlikely to go, but good that he gets a chance to prove himself. Who is he possibly going to usurp for a spot? Brad Davis, same sort of story there. Obviously a player who is crucial to the Houston Dynamo, has a wicked left foot, brings something unique to this team. That's something that we need to talk about. Which, one, which of these guys, particularly in the midfield and at forward, brings something unique that Klinsman wouldn't otherwise have, and can he afford to leave them out if they are ga potential game changers? Uh, another game changer I thought might get a shot. Juan Agadello, not in this team either. Nine five one, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, man? It's Giovanni. Hey, Giovanni, what's up? Uh, not much, man. Just uh, I'm a little surprised to see this roster. Man, there were a couple of players, you know, not in the roster that I would have liked to see, uh, and players that I wouldn't like to see, man. I, uh, I'm really surprised to see Brad, da uh, Brad Davis and Brad Evans. Yeah. What about uh, wh who? Who is not here that you would have liked to have seen? Sasha Kleshton's not in this team, and again, Eddie Johnson not in this team. Um, I would have liked to see, uh, or the person who I would really like to see is Juan Agudelo. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he uh, he's a great one v one player. Uh, just because he just had a few games over there in, in Holland doesn't mean that he should have gotten the chance over Wondolowski, but. I do see why Wando, even though I don't like him, and I wish that he didn't make the team, I do see why he is brought to the team. <laughs> that's cold-hearted, dude. <laughs> Come on, Giovanni. That's cold. <laughs> but but you, you, make no. a, you make a point about 1v1 players. You have Clint Dempsey. I'm not sure that that's his strength, but he can certainly do it. You have Landon Donovan, who's kind of beyond that point, never been a 1v1 player, although he might have the ability to do it. Um, beyond that, maybe Aaron Johansson. I mean, that's not really his bag either. But, but really, where are, the, where are the players? Julian Green might be the guy that you look through the midfield and, and, and the forwards and say, that's the one guy I think can beat a player 1v1 one, one one if need be. Now, is that something that the United States is going to need? Because more likely, that, more often than not, they're either going to play slow buildup 
and try to connect passes, and you're not really going to have players isolated, or you're going to be running the break. And if you're if you're trying to counterattack, you you hopefully have more than one or two players in um, in the break, and it's you know it's less of an issue. The thing is, the reason why I believe we need a one v one player is because when you have that moment, when you when you really need that moment, there's only going to be one player that can really bring it. And I just don't see Clint Dempsey be seeing that the player. Okay, yes, he's he's actually getting goals and and, and Seattle Sounders. I just don't see him being that player that he once was when he played for Fulham. He's not okay. as fast. All right. He, he's not as, he's, you know, he's not as creative as he once was. He, he's he's incredible. He, look, come on. He's still very, very dangerous. Maybe he's not the player he was four years ago, but he's still crucial to this attack. And he can still bring, um, he still can bring something to the table that the United States needs. All right, Giovanni, I've got a couple other I'm points not, I'm going to make. You got anything uh, else? Man? Go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, um, I'm really shocked that uh, Julian Green's going. I, don't get me wrong, I, I, he's, a, he's a good player, but I just wish that someone else would have had a chance. Yeah. Okay, so we're not positive that Julian Green's going to the World Cup, but he at least is going to get his shot in this camp. Thanks for the call, Giovanni. I appreciate it. 201-430-2378 is the phone number. Had multiple requests. Eddie, what have you done for me lately? For that, for that particular sound job, because yes, this is probably about, in some manner, what Eddie Johnson has done or not done lately at DC United. He has not scored goals. That has been a problem. He sort of pushed his way out of Seattle. He obviously wanted to get paid. I don't, I don't have any problem with him wanting to get paid, but when you go to a, a team that requires a style adjustment and you don't score goals, it's going gonna, it's gonna to impact you, especially when there are several other options. Guys who are scoring goals, Terrence Boyd stands out of that group. 816, you're on the air. 816, you're on hey, the air. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yep. You know, I'm disappointed that Benny Philhaber didn't make it. I think uh, without uh, if Michael Bradley goes down or um, is injured in any way, we have no way to distribute in that midfield uh, like Michael Bradley. And I think that uh, Benny Philhaber would have been an easy uh, easy addition to the team. Uh, I I don't disagree that Benny Philhaber has done enough to show up on this list, but it's pretty clear that at least in that particular role, the kind of player that Benny Philhaber is, Mix Discrude has jumped over him. And as long as Discrude is getting looks, it probably means Philhaber's out. And, and, you know, maybe we could argue about who, who does more work defensively. I think P- Failhopper has picked his game up in that regard since joining Sporting Kansas City, but he's still not a player you trust to track back and, and make a mess of the midfield when you need that element. Yeah, but right now, Mix isn't getting very much playing time, and then he's playing the best time of his life. Sometimes you got to take point. the person who's hot right now, not who was hot last year. Uh, I, I do think you're, uh, you're correct on that. Thanks for the call. 912, you're on the air. Uh, hey, yeah. This is Scott from Savannah. Hey, Scott. And I just want to talk about the Eddie Johnson. I think, uh, you know, some people say that he's uh, more athletic than Wando and all that, but you mentioned uh, that he hasn't been a problem for the national team, but I still think that uh, you don't want to take anyone who's, A, not scoring goals, and, B, there's a potential that he could become a problem, say, if he's not being used as the super sub that uh, he was in the Gold Cup. You know, I, 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 look, I think in Eddie's defense – he swallows that ego a lot when he shows up to the national team. I, I, I don't know how he acts within an MLS locker room. I don't know how he acts in any locker room. But from the outward appearances, it doesn't seem like he's one of those guys that's playing you know, BMOC in the locker room. I, I'm, I just don't see that. I'm not saying that that means he should have gotten a look for this team. I'm just saying I, don't, I really don't think that that's a factor here. I honestly think that for Jurgen Klinsmann – Form has trumped everything. Now we could argue whether or not that's the right way to go, but when you look at the guys right. that he, you look at the team he selected, you look at the forwards. Altidore, we knew he was going to be in this team. He is a lock. Terrence Boyd is the guy that perhaps benefited from Johnson not scoring the most. Uh, Clint Dempsey, mm-hmm. Landon Donovan listed as a forward, probably not going to play there. Aaron Johansson, you knew he was going to be there, and Wondolowski, who again has done he, he's done everything that Klinsman's asked, and he's managed to keep his goal scoring. A pace at least respectable in both MLS and he obviously scored for the national team. You got anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Thanks, man. All right, appreciate that. Byron, you're on the air. What's up? Hey, what's up, Jason? I just wanted to go over a couple things with you. Um, I got my seven guys that I think uh, will get the boot, I want, and I just wanted you to see what you think about it. All right, go ahead. Uh, Corona, Yedlin, Brooks, we do, Wando, Davis, and Brad Evans. And Brad Evans, 
is more of a thing that, that I really, really don't like Evan. <laughs> I mean, I think I, something Byron, about him, I'm scared. Byron, and <laughs> I think yeah. it, I think it's wishful thinking to think Brad Evans isn't going to Brazil. I'm not saying I'm not sort of with you. I, I'm go I go back and forth. I respect the hell out of what he's done for this team, and he's stepping into the role he's been asked to play. But I think he's going, and I think Klinsman likes him a lot for a lot of different reasons. So I think you're six or six or seven, possibly there. Every one of those other guys, I tend to agree with you. Did you mention Julian and, Green? Uh, Did you mention Julian Green, or do you have him going? Oh, I have him going. Definitely. Okay. All right. Anything and, else? Um, there's a. I mean, for this list that I just gave you, I think someone that deserves to go is, is John Brooks. I mean, I know he hasn't done much for the national team, but. He's been getting many minutes at Hertha, and I would like to see him go over good, but I, re- but I really don't see that happening. How many, how many center backs are you going to take? Do you have John Brooks? Well, over- I got. Go ahead. I got four. Okay, you have got, Gonzalez, Beasler, I got Gonzalez, Beasler, uh, Parkers, and Goodson. Okay, but you just said you want Brooks to go. So is Brooks better a better option than any one of those guys? And you have oh, Jeff- yeah, I I think so. I think so. But I okay. mean, I just think Klinsman is going to take uh, Goodson instead. But I would like to see Brooks. Okay. Well, appreciate the phone call, Byron. Thanks a lot. Um, seven. I'm trying to figure out who's on the line with me now. Um, you're on. You're on the air. Who's this? The over here. Yeah. What's up? All right, uh, I just want to give a call. Uh, the only thing looking at this roster that really surprised me and upsets me a little bit is DeAndre Edwin. The one-on-one defending is just not there for that guy. If he plays in the World Cup, he's going to get burned by any outside outside forward in the game. Is there a is there a good one-on-one defender in the U.S. pool right now? Go ahead. Absolutely. The most underrated player at, at right back by far is Andrew Farrell. He's not getting enough talk. <laughs> okay. okay. The guy's been so solid. For I, 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 I think Andrew Farrell is a player who's going to get a look and, and maybe deserves a chance to, to impress at the national team level. But he's not in this 30-man squad. I get what you're saying. Absolutely. But I don't think he was ever close to this 30-man squad. And, and he wasn't. He wasn't. But I think that it was unfair for J.K. not to look at him earlier. I think that he was overlooked earlier on okay. when Yedlin was looked at and hyped up super by Seattle. You know what I mean? Okay, but I don't think... I, Let's do. You, do you honestly believe that Jurgen Klinsmann just g- went ahead and acceded to the hype of DeAndre Yedlin when he called him up? You think that's all about hype? I think it's not all about that. I think he also has a has a thing about against New England. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, Sarah, I look, Benny, Benny Saylor we're gonna call up right after he left New England, like as soon as he left the door. Yeah, but he's not gonna call up now, and he's playing for the one of the best teams in the league. Appreciate the phone call, yep. man. Uh, right. I can argue that. Yeah, uh, nine one two. You're on the air. I lost that one. Let's uh, let's go to five four one. You're on the air. Hey, what's up, Jason? It's Casey. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, Casey. Hey, um, I am completely dumbfounded that Juan Aguidelo is not on this roster, especially that he's trying to get a work visa. And he's been playing pretty well for FC Utrecht. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't believe he's not on this roster. I'm really surprised by that. All right. Which one of these forwards do you take out in order to put Juan Aguilero on the list? Uh, Wondolowski. Wondolowski. Okay. Because I don't think we'll have the possession to have that type of player as a poacher uh, against the Ghana yeah, and but Germany and Portugal. We won't have possession enough to put a few crosses in the box. We won't have possession enough to get a set piece or two. We don't have possession enough to create a shooting opportunity that results in a back post rebound that Wando can put away because that's his bread and butter. I don't, I don't know that that's true. In fact, if we're being completely fair about this, Juan Agudelo is, 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 uh-huh. he's not consistent enough. And I'm, I, I, I'm not saying I don't like him. And I've made the argument that he's the guy you take because he can be a game changer off the bench that Wondolowski can't. But if you're talking about goal scoring, I trust Wondolowski more than I trust Juan Agudelo. I can tell us the type of guy, though, that can create something just out of nothing throughout his career and stuff. And, I, I, I'm with you on I that. To, I'm with you on that. Go ahead. I wanted to talk to you about um, uh, Brett Shea has been playing, but him not being in this roster gets me thinking that I think he wants Fabian Johnson at left mid, combining with Elton and Dempsey and Parkhurst okay. at left back. Well, 
But I'm surprised Shea didn't at least make the 30 man. Granted, he has been playing, but he's a, he's a weird case, though. Yeah, no, he, he is a weird case. I think he just dropped too far down, um, too far down after not playing at Stoke, having bad loans. It just hasn't been a good period for him, and, and he's basically not played himself. I mean, he's, he hasn't been playing, so he's off off the radar for the moment. I think Brad Davis is the guy that benefits. Now, here's the interesting thing, Casey. The guy that uh, that you talked about, Fabian Johnson, perhaps playing in the left side of midfield, is listed as a defender. And it doesn't always mean anything because Landon Donovan's listed as a forward, and we usually don't see him there, but it is something to consider. Appreciate the phone call, man. 770, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, Jason? This is Mike from Atlanta. What's up, Mike? Hey, um, <clears throat> I just want to say, you know, shout out to my German-Americans. Uh, Tim Chandler getting back in the squad. All right, I'm really, all right. really hey. excited about it. All right, does he I make? Know. Does he make the final twenty-three? Yes or no? I actually, I think he does, and I think it has more to do with the lack of players that he that Jurgen feels like can play, can hang at that level, um, and be productive than it does actual like him actually being skilled enough. To be honest, well, I, know, I think I think like, we're all a little nervous about Timmy Chandler, not because he doesn't have the ability. We all know he can play at this level. He just has to be committed. He's got to come in and he's got to show it. And it, there might not be a player in this pool who will be more scrutinized in the send-off series than Timmy Chandler. Yeah, I totally agree. With you. And it's and it's something that he has to prove to not only like us as fans or whatever, but prove to his teammates because he wasn't. He was, you know, he could have been seen as one of the guys who messed with the chemistry leading or after the Norris game. Yeah, I'd I'd, li- I'd like to see Ch- I'd like to see Chandler get uh, at least sixty sixty five minutes in both of the games that are, that occur before the roster gets cut down. You got May twenty seventh against Azerbaijan in San Francisco, and June first against Turkey. It, uh, at Red Bull Arena. Those are the two games that happened before the cut down. Timmy Chandler, if he's going to be a real option here, because l- let me ask you this. How do you, how do you feel about a back line that doesn't have Timmy Chandler? And then what do you feel? How do you feel? How much better do you feel about a back line with Timmy Chandler in it? Well, let me just start off by saying that none of our right backs are going to be able to guard any of the midfielders <laughs> or the midfielders that we have. Like that's the people who are talking about like, oh, he's not good one on one. Well, none of them are. So Ronaldo's going to run by all of them. So I will say that a back line with Timmy Chandler, and it makes me feel better going forward than any other back line because we know what we get from Cameron. We know what we get from Evans when they play right back. They're very much like, and even Parkhurst, we know yeah. what we're getting. They're going to stay in position, not going to make a ton of mistakes. But, you know, in a World Cup where we might, you know, some of our strikers aren't exactly you know, outside Clint Dempsey. They're not exactly the hottest thing right now. We might need a little more going forward. So I feel like Chandler gives us more forward than any of the other right backs we have in our system right now, and that's why I feel like he'll make the team. He may not start. He may not even play much. But I think just the option of him being able to go forward more than the other right backs allows him to make the squad. All right, if you want to get in, thanks for the call, man. Uh, 912, you're on the air. Let me get to you in a second. If you want to get in with your thoughts on Twitter, best thing to do is hit uh, at Best Soccer Show. We'll get to him. A couple of people asking about Tim Ream. He's obviously not in this roster. He came on late for Bolton. One player of the year for Bolton, not even came on late, has been playing well for a while now, but clearly his lack of a defined position is probably part of his problem there. Um, it, you're looking at this. Ricky, uh, Ricky, Ricky likes the number of right backs in this team. Um, and a good point here on Twitter about Juan Agadello. The work permit deal is that ship has sailed. He's not getting it. His, term, his contract is, with Stoke is terminated. He'll be finding another team this summer. So that had nothing, to, you know, if, if it was a matter of let's get this guy to a better place or let's get him his permit so he can play in England, that obviously wasn't a consideration. 9 one you're on the air. Yeah, I was, um, Robert from Athens, Georgia here, I was looking at the roster. Fabian Johnson is listed as a defender. I think that's notable. Um, and I think the fact that, that he's bringing in DeAndre Yedlin and Timothy Chandler is a pretty good signal that we want to move Jeff Cameron to center back and we're having an audition to that right back spot. It's very possible. It's very. I mean, you look at the you look at the options there. If you assume that Brad Evans isn't good enough, and I think everybody is of the opinion that against Concacaf opponents you can get by with Brad Evans, but against big time World Cup opponents, it's not going to happen. It's not going to go very well. Let's find somebody who actually knows how to play right back. You look at the options: Timothy Chandler, DeAndre Yedlin, Michael Parkhurst. You have, and then obviously Evans will get his chance to show whatever he can do in this camp. You'll have an opportunity to to weed out a guy who's playing the best right now, who understands the system, whatever Klinsman's going to run, because we're still a little bit up in the air, 
as to what he's going to run exactly. And and the, get, go ahead. The difficulty with the back line is that in qualifying, Evans kind of served as a as an um, additional midfielder when Beasley would gallivant forward. And I just wonder if he moves Fabian Johnson, who fits the you know the attacking mold from a defender position, and he adds someone like Timothy Chandler who adds that role, or even DeAndre Yedlin. You know, are you going to get exposed in the back on? on a quick counter when you mm-hmm. turn over the ball well, I think and then two passes and then, you know. What you've seen is, is Klinsman, Klinsman's team play sort of a seesaw. You don't really get, if, if Brad Evans is playing right back, you're not having Brad Evans push up high up the field. Uh, Michael Parkhurst is the same kind of player. He's not going to be quite as involved in the attack as a DeAndre Yedlin would. But you always, you've had DeMarcus Beasley on the left, and we're talking about Fabian Johnson playing on the left. I think everybody wants that because he's the safest bet He's, he's a good enough player to be a midfielder, but he's also a good enough defender that you feel more comfortable with in there. And he opens up a spot for somebody ahead of him on the left-hand side, whether it's Donovan or somebody else. But you, you, you would get that sort of seesaw effect. I don't know that if Fabian Johnson's playing on the left, is he quite the same kind of attacking threat as DeMarcus Bleasley? He's a different player. He's not going to play the overlap as much. He's not going to get to the end line and put in crosses. He wants to cut in. What kind of issues does that create when you're trying to cover that space behind him? Yeah, exactly. I also think Kyle Beckerman may get it, may, may start a group stage game, and I don't think that should surprise anyone. Um, I think Jermaine Jones will be used in the Ghana game, and I think they may uh, move Michael Bradley further up the field to try and turn the ball over against Portugal more quickly. Thanks for the home call. Yeah, appreciate that. 336, you're on the air. Uh, hey, uh, my thing, I guess, is kind of about EJ and um, also – Brett Shea, because both of them have been given that tag of late game changer sub. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it made, at first I wondered, okay, who is that then if both of them are not there? And I can't really make the arguments against all the arguments that have been made to keep those two out. But at the same time, it starts to make me think, is that Donovan? Is that Julian Green? Is that Boyd? Can Boyd do that thing that EJ did where he came on? And before he even stopped moving, he was heading a goal in. Like, that's, that's my question. I'll, I'll hang well, on. Well, I appreciate the call. I, I certainly think that Terrence Boyd is capable of playing that way, of being that guy to come in and be a set piece danger. But are you really going to be counting on set pieces late in the game if you need to make an, an attempt to come back? You're down a goal. It's desperate. I, I, pre- I would prefer a guy who can put the ball on his feet and beat somebody and create his own shot. I don't think that's Terrence Boyd. Nothing against him. He feel, he fills a role. He can he can be dangerous, but it's a different kind of danger. And again, do, that's it's a very good point. Who do you have off the bench? Unless you're taking Julian Green and you want him to be that guy. Wow, I don't know. And Klinsman apparently right now talking about Landon Donovan as a striker. That means Landon Donovan is not starting at the World Cup, which comes as no shock at this point. But it is something to consider. Nine five six. You're on the air. Yeah, man. This is Johnny Bravo. How you doing, Jason? Yeah, what's up, Johnny Bravo? How you doing, man? Always good to talk. I have two points to make right here. First, I don't know why Wando made this roster over Agudelo. That's just how I feel. And second, I believe that Parker gets cut. Chandler makes it. And I don't know. It's between Evans and Yedlin. Okay. Well, you also... You but you also have Jeff Cameron who can play right back. I don't think you need to take those other two guys. You don't need to take the extra guy. Because yeah, you have but Chandler Jeff can play left back. Remember that. Well, that okay. I mean, you, you there are certain guys you are more comfortable about flipping than others. I don't know that I want Timothy Chandler playing left back, but I suppose if you're in a pinch, you need him to. But if you're going to take Beasley, because you think Beasley's getting dropped, I don't. Well, no, I don't think so. I think. Well, Beasley, what about Yellen? Yellen gives you versatility because his uh, Cameron doesn't have the speed or um, going forward like Yellen does. So. Late in the game, he would probably be more useful than Cameron. Okay. I, I think that if, if you're going to bring on a defender late in the game, then, the, then DeAndre Yedlin is the kind of defender you would want to bring in, but that's still not exactly what, we're, what would be most effective. You imagine you're trying to, in that, posi- in that situation, you're trying to create opportunities for Yedlin to get forward. Why not put in a, an attack minded midfielder or another striker? So I am with you on, a, on one level, Johnny, but I'm not on the other. 5 1 8, you're on the air. Hey, Jason, it's Francisco. Uh, just a quick question about or, or your opinion about Timmy Chandler. Do you think if he has a good send-off series with the U.S., do you think he has a chance to make it to the World Cup and to start in the game against Ghana? At this point, all bets are off, right? You have to be open to the idea of putting the best player out there 
to have the greatest impact. And considering the the talent and ability attacking wise that you're facing against Ghana, Portugal, and Germany, absolutely he does. One hundred percent he does. And and there should be no question that based on his abilities, based on his comfort level in that position, based on the level of competition he's been playing in Germany, he should get that opportunity. Okay, and I think one of the snubs of the team that didn't make it by far was Eddie Johnson. I think, of course, he's not scoring that many goals in, in with uh, DC United, but he did prove a lot during qualifying, so I think he deserves a chance yeah, to I'm, be looked at here. You're giving me an opportunity to Eddie, use it. what have you done for me lately? It just hasn't, it just hasn't been good enough for Eddie Johnson recently. Thanks for the call, phone call. Eight, well, 801, you're on the air. Yeah, I have a question about your boy Donovan and Beckerman. <laughs> Where do you see them uh, playing their role in this World Cup? Uh, well, do you think Be- they make the 23-man Be- roster? And you're the man, brother. I appreciate that. I think Beckerman goes. There's no question about that. He is the guy who steps in if you lose one of your defensive midfielders. I, I-, I don't. I think Clinton's Clins- going to go with his his previous um, his previous mentality of two defensive mids, two holding mids, maybe allowing Michael Bradley to push up. We know that Bradley played very very well with Kyle Beckerman yeah. recently, but and, and he was at, at the point of a at the top point of a diamond rather than playing uh, as deep as he usually is. Even though he basically had the same sort of game he would playing in front of the back line, but at the same time, you know Jermaine Jones is going to get the start. That's just the, been the pattern. If we're going by patterns, Beckerman yeah, and a red be- card. Well, okay, maybe, but he's not quite as dangerous as people want to make him out to be. But Beckerman may have a chance to play, especially if you're shutting things down. And I, 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 I when it comes to who was the other question about Landon Donovan? Uh, Don, Donovan, do you think he's a starter? He comes off the bench for energy. What I do you think? Look, what do you think his role is on this team? I watched him on Saturday or um, Sunday against the Timbers. Saturday, whatever that game was, I watched him against the Timbers. I thought he was pretty good. I thought he was engaged. I thought he was sharp. Sharper than I've seen him in a while. I think you take him. I don't know that he's a starter, though. But again, we, we have that open question of who plays on the left side of midfield if it's not Landon Donovan, and if you're using Fabian Johnson as a left back. Zuzi, maybe? I don't know. Zuzi is a right-sided player. I'd rather have Graham Zuzi on the right side. Yeah, well, the question, I guess, will be, do you think they both make the 23 man, right? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, I do. If I was putting okay. a bet on it, yeah, I, I would say that. Appreciate the phone call. 240, oops, hold on, let's go ahead and answer the phone before we say who it is. 240, you're on the air. Oh, hey, this is uh, Alan. Hey, Alan, what's up? Uh, I'm talking This is, I'm talking about, um, I don't understand why uh, Brad Davis got to the U.S. World Cup r- uh, roster. I just, I'm um, the 30-man roster. I don't see anything that he did to prove that he deserves to be on the, on the squad. You don't think Brad Evans did anything at all to to no, prove? Like Brad Davis. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Brad. Da- uh, well, Brad Davis again. He's a unique player. He's had moments. He he played well um, in Arizona. He's he's a dangerous left foot in a team bereft of that option. There's just not I a just guy. I really see him as a threat. I don't see him able to control the ball. And if you really want to see him against guys and against Ghana or Cristiano Ronaldo in Portugal or you know guys against Germany, do you really want to see him in the starting lineup? I don't want to see him in the. I don't think I want to see him in the starting lineup. But I can understand why having him on the bench would be good. And and you need to take some cover in midfield. The guy knows how to play. I I, I trust Brad Davis not to be a disaster out there. But whether he can be effective on that level, open question. Yeah, true, 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 true. And, and okay. another thing, I also have another question mm-hmm. about the right back. I'm I'm actually I think he's a good player. I I just a little surprised that he came in the near Yedlin. I don't know why he. Uh, I just I'm just shocked because he didn't have enough international experience to be in the World Cup roster. I mean, he's a good player. I'm just really surprised. Okay, well, who, the 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 question when you say something like that is always who should be the guy that does get the shot? Who's who's the guy that should have been in this team? Remember, it's a 30 man provisional roster. Seven of these guys are getting cut. Who deserves to be in this team over DeAndre Edlin? I don't see anybody. I mean, I I'm, I'm not saying he's bad, but I think. I think that I it just I didn't see him, you know, in, in a lot of the. I didn't. It's because we didn't put him in the World Cup ball. Well, I, no, I understand. Really I understand that, but I'm saying that there's not a lot of of quality right back options in the pool. Not enough guys of of experience, even uh, even as a professional, much less beyond that to international. Yeah, Yedlin doesn't have many caps, and he's been shaky and up and down, and had some good moments, uh, equaled out by bad moments or canceled out by bad moments with the national team. But you at least know what you're getting. And you know he can play that role, and obviously, look if you're trying to bl- if you're trying to use your fullbacks as an attacking uh, p- uh, component at all, 
I want DeAndre Yedlin at least as an option. Would you put him in right back uh, in the right back position? In a to start in a World Cup game? No, I don't think I would. I would put Jeff Cameron in. I mean, Jeff Cameron to me is proven to be a solid right back. Well, He's a great player, and I really, I really am a big fan of this guy. And I think he could really, you know, help the back line out. There's a couple of things. Thanks for the phone call. There's a couple of things about Jeff Cameron I like at right back. He is a good passer. A decent passer. I've seen him make some mistakes, as, as all defenders are wont to do. But he's a good passer. He obviously has under, he understands the position, having played it at Stoke. There's something to that. And he's capable of getting forward. I mean, he's not the fastest player, and he's certainly not the, the player that you are looking to create your chances with. But he can combine and be an important component. 415, you're on the air. This is Eric from San Francisco. I, I wanted to point out something ironic about Chambers' involvement in the roster here. All right. And I think Jurgen Klinsman may be having to hedge against Gonzalez's potential uh, lingering injury. And it was Chandler. Uh, you know, if, if Cameron has to move over to the middle, then you need another right back, that being Chandler. But two years ago, it was Chandler the one that hurt Gonzalez initially. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, the fact that Chandler might squeeze his way into the roster as, you know, just from a lingering injury or something like that is ironic. But uh, Gonzalez is now in a position to, if he gets healthy soon enough, perhaps push Chandler out. So it's sort of an interesting motivation or potential motivation for Gonzalez. I suppose that's possible. I mean, I think it's interesting to consider, again, looking at these right-back options. You have Chandler coming in. It's a little bit of a surprise, a lot of, big surprise for a lot of people. Um, you have Michael Parkhurst, who can play there, been playing centrally for Columbus, but I think Klinsman sees him as a right-back. You have DeAndre Yedlin, who's a young player, and you have, uh, you have Jeff Cameron, who is probably best as a central defender, but has been playing on the right for Stoke. And you wonder where who's competing against who exactly? There's some permutations there. Is Cameron really uh, is he competing against anybody because he's versatile enough that he's going to be too valuable to leave home? Is Michael Parkhurst competing against those right back options, or is he thought of as a central back cover? I, I it's 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 interesting to to consider all of these permutations. Appreciate the phone call two oh two. You're on the air. Hey, how are you? This is Fred. I wanted to uh, answer a question regarding the. Uh who was a better right back than Yedlin, who deserved to be on the roster. Okay. And it has to be Andrew Farrell. Okay, he but, he, better, but I, I, I'm, he's come up on this show already, and, and, and I know that there's a, a movement out there, particularly around um, among Revolution fans, to push for Andrew Farrell. To get oh, I'm to, not a Revolution fan. No. I'm just an MLS fan. No, no, no. I, I, I appreciate is, that. Yeah, Andrew Farrell is just better defensively. He's just a better right back. To the core of what a right back is, Andrew Farrell fits it more than Yedlin. Okay. Yedlin is just an offensive threat, but defensively he's awful. Like the last game he just played, yeah, he he, he can't be on the team. He ha- he he has some switch off moments. He has some issues playing, uh, getting back and, and co- playing cover defense. The, the the thing about Farrell and the reason that he wasn't really promoted as a possibility with the previous caller is because that caller said Yedlin's lack of experience is what worries him. Well, if you're worried about lack of experience. Uh, Andrew Farrell's not your guy because he's got zero international experience. He hasn't been there yet. And I think that that maybe that's part of this. I mean, I don't have the cap breakdown. U.S. Soccer usually sends that out. Maybe I can find it somewhere. But if you yeah. look you look at this team, y- Yedlin and Green have to be the guys with the fewest number of caps, right? And, and a, a, yeah. again, that's a it's a function of the lack of options both in both positions where you would expect to see those guys. I know Julian Green... Um, Julian Green is more likely to play left side of midfield maybe late in the game than anywhere else if he gets on the field. And you don't have many options there. Brad Davis is in this team because of that. The same thing goes yeah, for right... also because of his left foot. I mean, who else? Who has a better left foot than him on the roster? D- than Brad Davis? Nobody. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's the other factor here. And when you flip it over to right back and you look at the guys that are competing, the reason on DeAndre Yedlin is in this 30-man roster with a chance to compete for a spot in Brazil is because there aren't that many quality options there. You've been playing Brad Evans out of position for a lot of qualifying that tells you where Klinsman's head is and he's looking at Chandler and he's looking at Yedlin and he's going to say hey guys, here you go. Here's your shot. Now, whether or not either one of them will be starters, I, I don't know. I think in that's the one position on the field where you could see somebody like DeAndre Yedlin or Timothy Chandler who hasn't been on the team for a while get a chance to start whereas if you're talking about any other position on the field, you're more likely to see a guy that Klinsman trusts and has used in recent times. Appreciate the phone call. 269, you're on the air. 269, are you there? All right, that's a good chance to take a breath. 201-430-2378 is the phone number. Give me a call. Let me know what you think of this roster. A lot of things to consider. I think that Klinsman 
I've been back and forth on whether or not Jurgen Klinsmann opening up this quote unquote competition, calling in all 30 guys to take into a camp is the right move. Now, on one level, you could argue, get your, tw- get your, tw- your solid 23, get them called in, select them now so that they can form that team uh, dynamic ahead of the World Cup. They've got three games between now and when they leave for Brazil. Get that started now. On the other hand, there are some, there's enough question at a couple of spots, and you want the best guy. You want the guy most committed. You want the guy who's playing the best right now within this system, within this camp. What they do on their club level, that's one consideration, but it shouldn't be the overriding consideration. 973, you're on the air. Hello, my name is Patrick. I'm from New Jersey. What's up, Patrick? And I would, I would just like to say I think it's ridiculous that DeAndre Yedlin was picked over Andrew Farrell. <laughs> okay. I mean, I just don't understand what Jurgen Klinsmann is doing. I think that he is buying into the hype of everything, uh, and uh, he is not making smart decisions because Andrew Farrell wasn't even given a look. All right, but I, I mean, I, if you guys want to create a time machine and go back eight months and convince Jurgen Klinsmann to give Andrew Farrell a look, be my guest. But at this point, I think yeah. Klinsmann is deferring to the fact that there's no experience there. He's never been in a camp. He's never really had a look. Why are you going to take your? Why are you going to fill up one of the thirty spots that you have in this in this camp with a guy who you're looking at for the very first time? Maybe they've scouted him, but that's different than bringing him in, seeing him run through the paces with this team, and that works in DeAndre Yedlin's favor. Maybe it's the wrong choice, player for player, but it's not the consideration that Klinsman is taking into account when he calls up DeAndre Yedlin. Okay, uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I think that my boy Edgar Cruz needs to to show a a feral movement or a quack movement and, uh, you know, and turn things around here. All um, right. I, I have no idea what you just said, but thanks a lot for the phone call. 905, you're on the air. 905, are you with me? All right, I don't have that one. Uh, 646, what's up? Hey, it's Mark Fishkin, Jason. How are hey, you? big Mark Fishkin up in Jersey. What's up, buddy? Um, I'm not calling to talk about Andrew Farrell, okay? I just want to put that out. Well, Mark, right you're, you're, you're not going with the crowd. you got to be on top of the new trends. The new trend yeah, let's, uh, is Andrew <laughs> Farrell. <laughs> Andrew Farrell should be in this team, Mark. <laughs> let's right. talk for a minute about uh, central defensive midfielders. Maurice Sidhu and Jermaine Jones and Kyle Beckerman and Michael Bradley. Okay. Matter, on the okay. same team. Yes. I, I, do we need four? I'm really not sure. Well, again, you're going to cut somebody. I imagine uh, Marisa Du is probably on the list of guys you're going to cut. Beckerman and Jones are probably going to go. Do you need three? I don't know. I mean, it does feel very Bradley-esque, does it not? Yes, it certainly does. And we know that Quincy, early in his tenure, played a lot of three central defensive mids. Now, mind you, he wasn't always playing Portugal and Germany. So obviously, Well, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I, I honestly don't. I think that I want to believe, Mark, that there was a progression for Klinsman from super negative and however you want to look at it. I mean, they certainly press the ball and all of those things, but certainly the ultra conservative three man, three central defender, or three central mids, defensive mids in the same team, sort of a progression to where we are now, which is more likely to play a four, two, three, one kind of setup, a five man midfield with two holding mids, allow one, allow them to play off of each other. One moving forward, one covering the space in behind. And I, I, I guess in that way, because you're going to play two, you probably need cover at least, at least one, which is, I imagine Beckerman's that guy. For but sure. you could make an argument that maybe you need two and Marisa Du should come. I, I'm not going to make it, but there it is. And one last uh, plug for Dex McCarty for U.S. Men's National Team. All right, fair Good enough. Night. Yeah, take five, take six. <laughs> Get Dax McCarty in the, in the mix. 905, you're on the air. Oh, hey, Jason. It's Vince. Yeah, Mark Fishkin of the World Famous Seeing Red podcast on NASN, by the way. Go ahead, Vince. Oh, uh, yeah, Jason. You know, um, you, you, you know, just, just, just quickly, just to add a little bit to this, as a Peruvian, I'm not exactly sad that Pharrell's gone because if the U.S. overlooks him, I wouldn't mind the Peru snatching him up. But uh, besides that, you know, um, I'm not particularly surprised by any of this. I mean, uh, the EJ situation is probably the most, but, uh, you know, uh, I guess Klinsman just decided, you know what, I don't, I don't want to bother with that, with that head case. But um, I'm a bit surprised that, uh, um, you know, Orozco and Castillo got left off. I mean, people don't necessarily rate yeah. them, but Orozco's been solid, and, you know, he is the most beastler like center back in the pool. And um, Castillo, like, he, even though his defending is, uh, he's, he's, he's still uh, pretty good uh, going up. Um, I just want to ask you two, two quick questions. Um, 
Uh, do you think Klinsman might use Beasley as a left mid because that's what what he is, and I don't understand why he doesn't want to do that. And um, do you think this Yedlin call up is like Bradley when he was called up in two thousand and six, where it was basically just to bring him into camp, but he wasn't going to make the roster? Uh, yeah, it's possible. I mean, you, uh, you, coaches do that stuff all the time. They call in a guy, give you a look. Here, this is the World Cup. This is the World Cup preparation. Get ready for it because your future is this, but you're not coming with us this time. That's very possible. He could be doing with Julian Green. We don't know. Everybody assumes Julian Green's going to get a spot, and that's the tea leaves that I read. But that might not be the case. It might be here's a, here's a look. Thanks for the switch. Here's the look. You're going to be in our in our plans, and we've got a billion tournaments coming up over the next six years. So get ready. Uh, here you go. Well, you mentioned Mike. Uh, you mentioned uh, Edgar Castillo. Maybe there's only room for one defensively suspect fullback in this attacking fullback in this roster, and it's DeAndre Edlin. I I don't know. I mean, it's opposite side, obviously, but Castillo is a guy that. Well, he plays on the right side. He's a guy who impresses when you watch him play with Tijuana, but he's, he doesn't have to do a ton of defending there. And it makes him look better, I think, than he actually is. And that's part of why he doesn't get the calls. I mean, we, we've seen him play well for the national team. We've also seen him be a, a, a tire fire. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, you, know, you know what I feel not bad for, but who I'm wondering about, Cameron. If he's gonna, if he's gonna get the start, because I mean, he's the one guy other than you know the keepers who uh, one of the he's the only outfield player that's had a good season in the Premier League. And based on these call ups and everything, there's no guarantee that I'll even start for the U.S. national team. Thanks for thanks, thanks for my call, Jason. Appreciate it, Vince. Vince in Toronto getting his two cents, and he just taught me something. I, I honestly didn't know that Andrew Farrell could be eligible for Peru. Honestly, didn't know that. Seven oh two, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going, Jason? This is Mel from Vegas. What's up, Mel? Hey, man, I'm going to talk about Josie Altidore, man. Um, okay. I just can't see him starting, bro. I just can't. But, well, okay, but, but Mel, here's the question. And again, every time this story, this, this issue comes up, I ask the same question to the person who says Josie Altidore can't start. Who starts over Josie Altidore? Because it matters how you're going to play. Is there another guy that can play with his back to goal in any way as effectively as Josie Altidore? You didn't call in Eddie Johnson. Maybe it's Terrence Boyd. But he doesn't quite have the same sort of athletic ability and and quickness and shot of Josie Altador in my mind. Yeah, that's that's true. But right now, Josie Altador is just playing so poorly. I understand we have to try to change the system around, maybe go to the diamond like we were doing before. Right. Maybe put Aaron Johansson up top. But you can't. We're going to risk it by putting Josie Altador in. Where he can't get a shot, man. He but, he's terrible. But again, he might not be asked to do that that much. I mean. He's had moments, and, and we've seen him go off and score a bunch of goals for the national team. I would say this about Altidore, because I'm still a fan of Altidore in the U.S. setup. Wait and see what the, what the, the uh, series brings. Wait, wait and see what the send-off series brings, how he plays in those games, because if he, I, I, bl- I really believe he's eminently more comfortable with the USA than he was at Stoke, and I, or, or at Sunderland, excuse me, and I think that that is going to play a large factor in how he plays. Thanks for the phone call, Mel, in, in Vegas. Um, next call up to, uh, can't see it right now. Who's this? Good time, man. It's Luke. Yeah, 208. What's up, man? Hey, so just a really quick, like a quick uh, like observation. Is there any chance that they've, that they've got all the young guys on, like, on this team, knowing that they're going to be cut or trying to, like, you know, they're ready for the, like, next step? Mm-hmm. No, possible. Again, we sort of addressed it with... DeAndre Edlin. It's very possible that could be the case with Julian Green. Beyond that, I mean, you're not looking at a ton of youth in this team. You're not looking at a, at a yeah. rack of young guys. I mean, Beasley, no. Beasler, not that young. John Brooks, okay, there's a young guy. You can maybe look at sort of, here's a, here, dip your toe in the water. You're not going to come with us, but get a chance to kind of experience the whole thing. Um, uh, obviously, Julian Green and DeAndre Edlin, I just mentioned. I don't think you can make that case for Joe Corona. He's certainly been in the team enough over the past couple of years. And that's it. I mean, the rest of this team, I mean, the average age of this team, if I'm looking at it right, it's going to be something like 20, 28 years old, 27, 28 oh. years old, something like that. I mean, that's not old. That's probably about right experience-wise, but it tells you where this team is. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, it's an observation. Okay, appreciate the phone call. 269, you're on the air. Yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering if... Uh, Clarence Goodson um, will make the team over John Anthony Brooks. I believe so, yes. In my mind, I think uh, Clarence Goodson is a guy that <clears throat> that Jurgen Klinsmann trusts a little bit. He's certainly a capable defender. 
the closest analog to maybe Omar Gonzalez that you have in the team with a slightly better first step. Um, not the well, he, he can get caught. Uh, he can get caught taking a slow step if you're playing an offside trap. But I mean, if you're playing a, a high line, but you you think that you're, that uh, Clarence Goodson is the guy that you most respect after your top two defenders at, at central at central defense, unless again Jeff Cameron is a guy who's legitimately going to get a shot in that position. Anything else, man? Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, let's move on. Six one four, you're on the air. Six one four. What's up? Oh, yep, that's you. What's up, man? Nothing much. Um, just got a quick question. Okay, go for it. Uh, <laughs> do you think Tim Howard will have the dominant performance in the World Cup over, say, any other goalkeeper? Is he the best? He's the best American goalkeeper right now. That's the case. He's a guy that's been there. He's a fixture. He knows the. He knows how to uh, direct that back line, whether you're changing some parts in or out or not. Um, I think he's, you know, a a, a top keeper. Depending on how deep you want to go, 20, 20, 25 keepers in the world that are on the same level as as Tim Howard. He can be that good on his day. Uh, you're, he's going to need to make big stops. I mean, let, let's. We could talk about the progression of this team under Jurgen Klinsmann, the notion of playing a, a higher pressure style, of a more attacking style, or going to play a 4-3-3, blah, blah, blah. That's sort of out the window, although it can morph into that on occasion. But what you're, w- one thing that will n- always hold true, until the United States has talent on the level of their opponents in this particular World Cup, Ghana, Portugal, and Germany, all three of those teams have, ha- have better talent, have more refined talent, have talent of a higher caliber based on where they play. Until that's the case, the United States is going to need great goalkeeping to stay in games. And I, I trust Tim Howard to do that. I don't think he's going to have any major howlers. He's not really that guy. It happens occasionally. It happens to everybody occasionally. I don't, that's a position I don't worry about. I really don't worry about Tim Howard. I know we went through a stretch where there was some honest discussion about whether or not Brad Guzan was better than Tim Howard. I don't think that's an issue right now. You head into the World Cup with Tim Howard. You're out and out number one. All right, 201-430-2378 is the phone number. Uh, we will take your calls on this roster. Who are you excited to see? Who are you surprised to see? Give me your seven cuts because I think that's the thing that people are going to start thinking about. You have two games before the roster gets pared down to 23. The last game, four players to make an impression, June 1st against Turkey at Red Bull Arena, 347. You're on the air. Hey, Jason, what's going on? It's Eddie in Brooklyn. Hey, what's up, Eddie in Brooklyn? Um, I haven't been listening to the show. My apologies. I was working, um, looking at that New York-Chicago game again. But uh, So I have no idea if you talked about it already, but I want to go to talk about EJ and Wando. Uh, my beef is, number one, those Wando goals are really going to come in handy or when you guys play, you know, like Guatemala and Belize and El Salvador <laughs> in the World Cup. All right. And, All right. Here we go. And two, um, all right, EJ, that game against Mexico, he scores a goal. It's offside. You think if that goes in the net, maybe that's enough for him to even be considered in the 30? I, ho- I would hope that one goal in a friendly doesn't make a big difference. I think it's got to be a bigger body of work, but maybe. But when, oh, maybe. I'm sorry, but wouldn't the qualifiers be big enough for work and in the Gold Cup because he performed there? No, I realize that. And, and I think that Eddie Johnson probably has a legitimate beef based on, on the work he did last year. But at this point, in, in this moment in time, and yeah, form is fallacy, et cetera, et cetera, he just hasn't shown enough, I guess, for Klinsman. I mean, I'm not saying that Wondolowski has outpaced him by leaps and bounds. And we are talking about different players, Eddie. So you look at the, what they do well, what Eddie Johnson does well, what Chris Wondolowski does well. You decide which one you need more. And clearly, Jurgen Klinsman says, I need a poacher. That's not what Eddie Johnson does, but he, he wants a poacher. But at this level, what does Wando do well when he does against, you know, stellar competition? He does nothing well. He doesn't uh, nothing no. well enough. I think in that, my opinion. I, okay. Chris Wondolowski may not wow anybody, but I really truly believe that no matter who you're playing, Chris Wondolowski is a nuisance. Chris Wondolowski will find pockets of space. Whether he finishes those chances is a different story, but I trust him right now more than I trust Eddie Johnson on that level to finish and, those chances. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think. Uh, EJ or Wando will probably make the would have made the twenty three. I think if you're gonna go with four, you're probably thinking maybe Terrence Boyd at this point. Okay, and and any particular reason, Eddie? Well, I mean he's he's scoring goals and you know in Austria it's not the you know best league in the world, but 
kind of you're not worried about House of Dog maybe because if you're going to have somebody that could play that role and maybe uh, in the four two three one, maybe yeah. it'd, be, it'd definitely be Boyd oh. more than Wando, don't you think? Boyd is the guy that stands in for out the door if you need to move out the door out. Absolutely. Yeah. But I don't know that does that does that buy him a spot? Because if you don't play with Altador, you could shift your ro- you could shift your formation. And this is what everybody says. Altador shouldn't start. Aaron Johansson should start. Well, okay, that's fine. I'm not saying you're wrong to say that. But if you start Aaron Can't do it in a four two three one. No, you cannot do it in a four three in a one in one striker setup. You need to play a second striker. They've he yeah. obviously trotted out the diamond against against Mexico. It was great for the first half. We'll see if he decides that Altidore's form is a problem, and I need to get somebody else. But Dempsey and, and Johansson up top, and then you op- obviously open up a spot. Well, uh, you obviously change your midfield, but you play a diamond, you play narrow. Can you afford to do that against teams that have speed on the wing like Ghana and Portugal, and and Germany can obviously do it as well. Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. Appreciate the phone hey, call. Start yelling against uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. I want to see that. Uh, sh- yeah, Brian Ev- Oviedo. <laughs> That's terrible, man. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. We'll see, you, see you later, Eddie. 225, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, I don't really have a question. Just an obvious statement. Major League Soccer Discussion Group is the best group on Facebook. Quack, <laughs> quack, 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 quack. All right. I don't know what the hell any of that meant, but that's good to, that's good to hear. 614, you're on the air. Hey, it's Tyler from Ohio. What's up, man? All right. All uh, right. Real something real quick that crossed my mind. All right. Brandon Donovan was a bust when he retired and then came out of retirement to play in the Gold Cup, <laughs> which I still have yet to understand why. And now the World Cup. Why? That, that's Isn't not, there other people out there that could take his spot over Donovan? That's not really what happened, but let's pretend for a moment it is what happened. What, who is better right now than Landon Donovan in that spot? I mean, we haven't even established whether or not he's going to the World Cup. He's just in a 30-man roster with an opportunity to earn a spot. Who deserves a chance over Landon Donovan right there? Who is okay. it? No, I'm, I'm asking you. Do you have an opinion of, oh. of a play? Is there a player out there in the world? Is, is, is it uh, Jose Francisco Torres, who nobody talks about anymore? Uh, who, who, who's the guy? Who's the guy that deserves a shot? Sasha Kleshton? Sasha Kleshton, maybe? I'm, yeah. I would say Flores because he, yeah, he might not get anything, but if he performs well, he might get better. He might get more talked about than Donovan. All right. I still think Landon Donovan is one of the most dynamic attacking players available to the United States, and you take him to the World Cup. That's bottom line. 309, you're on the air. I lost that call. Scott from Florida, what's up? Hey, um, I was just wondering about uh, Chandler's inclusion. I was a little surprised by that. Well, I mean, clearly, look, it, it's a couple months ago that Chandler sort of talked about getting back in the U.S. setup. You're, 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 you have an issue at right back because you've been playing a midfielder out of position for a while in that, in that job. You have a young player who's ro- not ready yet, DeAndre Yedlin. You have a center back who plays right back in the Premier League in Jeff Cameron. You have Michael Parkhurst who can play, can play right back but is playing center back in MLS. I think it kind of makes sense when you put all that stuff together, Scott. Yeah, he's, I think, the best athlete out of the bunch, and he's the best suited for it. But the last time he played in a hot environment, you know, Honduras, it wasn't that great. And they're going to be playing in the Amazon, so that's, you know, a little bit worse than Honduras. Uh, I, I am, I'm, that is also a question that you have to ask about Timmy Chandler. Is he ready to go down and play in some sticky heat again after his disaster of a, of a performance against Honduras? You got anything else, Scott? No, uh, I'm excited. All right, man. Appreciate the phone call. 207, you're on the air. Hi, it's Matt in Maine. Hey, hey uh, Matt in Maine. I just to give my uh, seven out. You're seven out. All right, go for it. All right. Brooks, uh, Davis, Corona, Green, Boyd, Adu, and Yedlin. I think that's uh, a pretty solid seven out. I mean, again, we're talking about whether or not Julian Green is a legitimate option to go to the World Cup. And if you, if you look at this, if you look at that, the, the guys that are left, okay, so you, you dropped Maurice Adu. You dropped Julian Green. You dropped Brad Davis. Did you say Brad Davis? Yeah. Okay, so who, who do you have that can step in, play on the left side of midfield, not just be sort of a, um, uh, a flipped right-footed player? Because if you want any width at all, and I'm not saying Jurgen Klinsmann definitely wants it, particularly depending on how he plays his fullback, you might have somebody who you'd rather have somebody who drifts inside. But if you do want somebody to go and stand on the chalk on the left side of the field, who is it? Because you don't have that guy now. 
That's true. I mean, if I in my dream lineup, I would probably have Donovan out on the left. Okay, but again, uh, Landon Donovan is right footed play. He has a left foot. He can use it. But he mm, he's but, a right footed I mean, player. Davis wouldn't start anyways. He's got the best left foot, but he's a late sub. No, I, I agree on that. I think it depends think, on what it it all depends on where Fabian Johnson plays. Again, he's listed yeah. he's listed as a defender in this roster. It means nothing. Nothing. Don't look into it at all. I know Klinsman said today he thinks of Landon Donovan as a striker, and there's Landon Donovan listed as a striker or a forward. But I don't think that you can read into these roster positions and actually you know, try to draw this out as, well, Fabian Johnson's clearly a defender. Now he's listed on the roster as a defender. No. That's not how Klinsman's going to do it because he can't afford to lock anybody into one spot if they're able to play somewhere else. And, and again, that, I think that left side of midfield is a particular question because if it's not Fabian Johnson, who's your starter there? If it's not Landon Donovan, who everybody's ready to push out, who's your starter there? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that uh, Jeff Cameron's, I know he's not left side player, but his versatility opens up so much space for everyone else. He's the one that's leaving uh, space for someone like uh, a green to make the team, even though I wouldn't put him on there because he backs up at right back. He backs up at center. He backs up at defensive mid. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, it's a lot of questions. Thanks for the phone call. Um, 201-430-2378 is the number. We're here for a couple more minutes. I haven't even had a chance the to drop that yet. The chopper is filling up rapidly. There's not 30 seats on the chopper. There's only 23 seats on the chopper. Those seven other guys got to fight their way in. 760. Hey, what's up? This is Wesley from California. What's up, Wesley? Hey, um, so yeah, on the left side, I don't know. Like, if Fabian Johnson isn't playing as a defender, then who would it be? Parkhurst, maybe? Um, I don't really see any other options of Beasley, I guess. You could, you could play, you obviously could play Beasley, who has been used there pretty consistently. You could flip Timmy Chandler if you take him. You could flip uh, Michael Parkhurst if you take him. Both of those are not perfect fits. I mean, I don't know who you would trust more. I think. Parkhurst is a heady defender. You're not going to get anything out of the attack for either of those guys playing on their off foot. Not really. I mean, you, exactly. may, you may have them cut in and uh, combine a couple of times, but you're not really going to get them pushing up the field down the flank. So uh, you're giving that up in order to get Fabian Johnson into the midfield. I don't know. Is that, is that so? I mean, again, Beasley is a guy who can do that. If you play Fabian Johnson in midfield, you play Demarcus Beasley, then you've got some danger down the left. You have to cover for Beasley when he pushes. You have to wonder about his one-on-one defending, but you get something out of it. Whereas the other side of the field, how much are you going to push with whoever is at right back, whether it's Chandler or Cameron or Parkhurst, or if it's Yedlin, I can't see that happening. Well, I think the coverage on the right is going to be better than on the left with Bedoya or Zussi. Yes, this is true. No, this is true. I'm just, I'm just suggesting that Klinsman has not really shown a propensity for starting two fullbacks who are both anxious to push forward and play up. I mean, obviously they have instructions. Whether You could, you could have Timmy Chandler and say, you're, you're pushing forward. You're going to be part of the attack tonight. But again, if you're playing teams that are dangerous on the flank, all you do is open up space, split your center backs, and then you have problems there. Anything yeah, else? Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. You got anything else? No, I think that was it. Thanks, right. man. I appreciate the phone call. Let's go ahead and wrap it up there. Uh, by the way, as always, keep it, keep your eye out. Best soccer show, pregame, halftime, postgame coverage of U.S. national team games. We're going to be lining that up for the send-off series as Jurgen Klinsmann runs this team through its paces. I think reporting day is Wednesday, except for Beisler and Zussi, who get to play one more game with Sporting before they report. Uh, so be on the lookout for our coverage here at NASN. Go download the app in uh, the Google Play Store. We've got the Android app out. Stitcher. Tune in, nasn.tv slash live, YouTube slash nasn TV, all of those places. And then like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and all of that. Yeah, all of that. Appreciate the phone calls. By the way, make sure you're listening to Soccer Morning, Monday through Friday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern on NASN. And if you're of the mind to keep this kind of show going, the reason I can do this is because of Soccer Morning and the support. Soccermorning.com. Help us out there. All right, anything else? Am I missing anything? I don't. I, I feel like we've done a lot here. We've done some good work. Jurgen Klinsmann's got thirty names. There's some left out. Some some surprises. Everybody's eyes on Timothy Chandler. What am I missing? Nothing, right? Let's just. We're gonna go, right? Okay. I, I just want to make sure. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you. Go. We'll talk to you. 
Best Soccer Show will be back shortly. I'm going to figure that out, too. But we'll talk to you shortly. Listen to Soccer Morning. Bye.